guys, it is Aoife from Friend Who Died Laughing and I'm here with a weekly wrap up. I got four books read this week in total and my first book that I read was Bring Me Back by B.A. Paris that came out this week but I did get this copy um, from HarperCollins in exchange for an honest review. Um, B.A. Paris is one of my, definitely one of my favourite thriller authors. Uh, she's definitely an author, I will read all of her work. So I was really, really glad to be able to receive this one. Um, and this one is a pretty interesting book. This is basically about um, a man called Finn who 12 years ago his girlfriend disappeared while they were coming back from a holiday in France and um, while they were kind of crossing over from France to England and she just disappeared no one ever heard, saw her again um, and he was like suspected of her murder please let him go eventually and now it's 12 years later actually engaged to his girlfriend's sister now uh, Ellen and his girlfriend was called Layla so he's engaged to Layla's sister um, and suddenly there seems to be sightings of Layla again um, after like 12 years of nothing um, and he starts receiving all these weird things um, in his house that are all connected to Layla and it, we find out that he hasn't ever, he hasn't actually told the police the whole story of the night that she went missing um, and we're kind of getting a bit of a back and forth we're getting his present day with uh, Ellen and all these weird things happening connected to Layla and then we're getting a look at his past as well um, and what happened how he met Layla what their relationship was like um, and how um, what actually happened that night so this one was definitely me, much like the breakdown it was a really really fast paced read I flew through it I think I read this in a day and um, that was with working and stuff in the middle of the day as well so like it's one that you can literally just fly through it's definitely one that would be great I think like on a holiday if you were just like by a pool or something for an entire day you could just fly through this one um I thought this one was like just the kind of the intrigue leading up to where we're finding out the, like, the big reveal, the plot twist. Um, I thought it was really good. I was definitely like on edge. I definitely wanted to know what happened. Um, this is the first book in a very long time that I've got kind of gone girl feels with and I say that in like I don't like I've always said it before I hate when books like in the front of books you say you love this if you love gone girl you'll love this if you like the girl on the train. But this was definitely the first book in a very long time where I got that kind of not everything is as it seems feel that Gone Girl g gives. Now, Gone Girl is a lot more complex um, and like, you know, more intricate than this book is, but it definitely had a similar kind of feeling where you kind of knew that you weren't really sure what to trust of your characters. You knew they weren't really quite telling you the truth. Um, and I really, really loved that. I did actually give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars, um, which is a lower, much lower rating than uh, my previous BA Paris book, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars to. But I just felt like near the end, things kind of got a little bit crazy and a little bit unbelievable for me as well. Um, and I didn't like some of the chapters that were in another person's point of view. I just thought some of them were a little bit unnecessary maybe. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I, did, I wasn't like, I did like the plot twist of it, but I wasn't like as like shocked by it as I have been by other books. But um, I do think if you are into thrillers, you might like this one. Um, I would say to give it a go. B.A. Paris does definitely know how to write a good addictive thriller that you can just fly through. Um, so it's definitely worth picking up. The next book I read was actually an audiobook I finished this week and that was The Bronze Key by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Magisterium series um, which is like a middle grade slash YA, young, young YA um, book about a boy called Carl who is basically in this magic school called the Magisterium. Um, so this book is was interesting I did enjoy a lot of it however I felt that again I just I want more magic school and you don't really get that much magic school I just love all like the process of learning magic and the classes and stuff and you just don't get that in this one which I was like a little bit of like you know sad about Um, I definitely guessed like there's this whole thing about there's like there's someone that they can't trust and there's like someone out to get them in this book um, and I definitely guessed who it was quite early on um, I'm not really sure how I did but I did um, and then I felt like it was staring at them in the face for like the rest of the novel and um, there's also something that happened at the very very end which was so obvious was going to happen but at the same time I didn't want it to happen so I was still sad when it happened and um, so it did get me it did get me sad it did get me quite emotional but it was still kind of it was so obvious that it was going to happen so yeah um this one is definitely my least favorite of this series so far like I actually didn't even have that much to say about it except like it was okay I just didn't love it um so I gave it a three out of five stars though it might be more of a 3.5 out of five stars to be fair to it um but I am very much looking forward to reading the fourth book um which I think it's called A Silver Mask, which I've heard very good things about. So I am looking forward to getting on to that one. I just don't know when my library will have the audiobook. So, because I have listened to the second and third one on audiobook and I quite enjoyed them. Even though the narrator is not my favourite narrator, but um, 
um, I have enjoyed listening to them on audiobook anyway. So yeah. The third book I finished this week was Almet by Fiona Mosley. This is a book that was long listed for the Man Booker Prize um, in 2017 and it, is, it has also this week been long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction which was very exciting. I was like halfway through this um, or like very close to the end when the long list came out and I already knew that this was going to be on it because I loved it so much. I adored this book. This book is kind of a quiet novel um, and we're getting the point of view from this boy called Daniel. He's about 14, 15 years of age um, and he lives with his sister Kathy and then their dad who they just call daddy for the entire book um, in this kind of, they built this house from scratch um, and they live on this kind of piece of land that we soon learn don't actually, doesn't actually belong to them. They kind of just showed up and um, built this house and we're kind of just getting a look at their relationship their relationship with each other their little family um and then also their relationship with nature and their relationship with the world around them and how they kind of have created this lovely peace around them and um, that's a little away from kind of the urban lifestyle it's very it's very countryside it's very rural and it's very like basic almost but it's lovely it's so lovely um and we're just get we we kind of know that something is going to happen near the end that things are kind of like it's bringing us somewhere where things are suddenly going to be disrupted and everything is going to be destroyed um, and Daniel is kind of telling this story we're kind of seeing bits and pieces from Daniel in the future and we know things haven't worked out for him as well as like we would want them to um, and we're kind of we're just following them along with it but oh there's just something about this book that I adored I just loved it so much Um, it was such a lovely read I just I love the relationship with Kathy, Daniel and their dad Um. It was just, I don't know, I really love relationship with, with two children and a dad because me and my brother are very, very close to our dad and we did a lot of things, just the three of us growing up. I do really love seeing that kind of that kind of relationship um, in books as well and I think this definitely had it. Um, and it, as well, the older sister with the younger brother and the older sister kind of looking out for the older the younger brother, which is like basically what I've done my entire life is look out for my younger brother because that's what a big sister does. So yeah, so this was in that book as well and I just loved seeing it. Um, there was a point in this book about halfway through where I actually wanted to stop reading and I wanted to put it down but it wasn't because I wasn't enjoying it it was because I was enjoying it so much that I was in so in love with the characters and their relationship and the lovely things about them that I didn't want to go any further because I knew something was going to happen and I knew things probably weren't going to work out for them and I kind of just wanted to freeze that moment and leave them in their little bubble of peace and happiness and I just wanted to leave it there and be like well no you're going to stay like that forever because I knew something was going to happen and I just did I just was so sad to read further because I just didn't want it to happen to them so yeah um this 100% deserves to be on the long list for the Women's Prize for Fiction um which is a wonderful list. I'm going to try and read most of the books on that, the ones that I haven't read already. Um, but I would 100%, if anyone likes just reading those quiet books, books about family relationships, books about nature, books that have beautiful nature descriptions in them, this is the book for you. I adored this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much. Um, I really, really highly recommend it and I'm so, so glad I picked it up. And the last book I read was for my Irish readathon, which was Edna O'Brien's Into the Forest, or In the Forest, I should say. Though I will say that um, Elmet and Bring Me Back also they had Irish characters in them, so they kind of worked into the Irish readathon a little bit. Um, but this one is obviously with um, to do with um, an Irish writer, Irish publishers, um, green on the cover, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this one fit in very well. And I've never actually read any Edna O'Brien before, so I was very interested to go into this one. And this one was a weird book. This was a very strange book. Um, this is about, this is actually uh, based on a real murder that happened in Ireland in, I think it was 94? Yeah, 94. Um, and it's where a woman and her son were both uh, murdered by this man. Um, and a priest, a local priest, was murdered as well. And it turned out that the person who'd killed them was this young man who had been imprisoned, who'd been like juvenile detention and had been in prison in England, where, um, had been sent to prison in England and was kind of like terrorising the community and then he went and killed these people. Um, and this is kind of like a novelisation of that of what really happened um, except obviously you know it's a little bit more like you have like their different names and stuff but it's very much based on that real murder and um, so we are getting the perspective of this very mentally unhinged young man from the time he was quite young and we're hearing about how he ended up in this kind of um, I guess school or 
reform school for kind of juvenile delinquents in a way and some of the stuff that happened to him there and how he comes back years later as an adult and he's definitely like his mental health is not there at all he's definitely quite unstable um he has a lot of violent tendencies and we're seeing his obsession with this young woman who is um a mother to a young boy and how things kind of just lead up to the point where he kills her um and we're seeing how the community treat him how they're so scared of him how he acts off on this um on the fear he can bring to people and a lot of it is kind of showing i think it is actually a good look at how mental health like we still have huge problems with how people are treated in ireland in terms of um our mental health uh clinic our mental health system is not where it should be um it's very slow people are slow to get the help they need where back in like the 90s when this is kind of set it would be completely like it wasn't it was even worse um so we're kind of seeing how he was treated as, as he was younger and how it all kind of contributed contributed to him being so bad to the point where he was left like to his own devices and he ended up killing these people for like absolutely no reason like he had no motive towards killing these people except they kind of annoyed him so he decided well I'm going to shoot you like um so yeah it was a pretty interesting look at it all um it's written in a way that I don't think it would suit everyone it's written in this kind of strange way but getting into the head of the murderer was definitely very 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 strange um and it was a little bit disturbing at times I will say that like there's bits that ha there's things that happen to him that are disturbing there are thoughts he has that are disturbing there are things he does that are di that are disturbing it's quite a disturbing read in total but um I wouldn't say I didn't enjoy it but I wouldn't say that I loved it either so I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars I think um but yeah I thought it was a very interesting look at things but um yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it, but it was an interesting read. So that's everything I finished this week. Right at the moment, I'm actually reading Silence Under a Stone by Norma McMaster, um, which I'm only a little bit into. I just haven't had time to read like since like Thursday, so um, I'm going to try and crack on with this tonight and try and get it finished tomorrow. So I'll talk about that next week. But yeah, please let me know how you guys have gotten on with your reading. If you've read anything for the Irish Readathon, what you guys think of the books I've read, because I would love to know the usual. And um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye!